Welcome back to the Skits and Giggles podcast. I am Pascal, chief instigator of the show and your host. I'm joined by my co-host and our resident engineer, the chain ring to my crank, Bryson. Hey, Pascal. I'm really excited for this one. It's finally our, our time to get a little bit, let's say, meta and talk some, about something bigger than the bicycle itself. What was your impression? Well, I think today's uh, episode is probably one of our most more significant um, recordings. Uh, we sat down with Nikolai Rabo, who is the finance director of Well Africa. And uh, I thought it was super interesting to hear um, the work that they're doing here in Switzerland, as well as in Africa, some of the impacts that they're having. And of course, um, COVID and et cetera, here are some of the challenges that they've been dealing with over the last couple of years. What did you think? I'm really grateful we finally have an opportunity to showcase some real good that's happening in the world. It's really an honor that we have a representative of Bell Africa with us. Well, before we get to that, let's just briefly do our spiel with the uh, social and where you guys can find more information about the Skits and Giggles podcast. We are currently most active on our Instagram where you can skit right into our DMs and follow along at Skits and Giggles. And you can find our website with all the relevant links and info under the URL skitsandgiggles.com. Also, if you guys like what we're doing and want to know what's up, just give us a follow on Spotify. Hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to great podcasts. Catch you after the show. Well, welcome to the Skits and Giggles podcast. Nikolai, how's it going today? Hello, everybody. Doing perfect. Bryson, how's it going with you? I'm also well. How are you doing, Pascal? I'm, I'm well. I'm looking forward to this conversation. To, uh, today, we have a, an interesting one. It's, it's slightly different than what we normally talk about. Uh, normally, we talk about uh, racing and trail building and riding trips and all these kind of things. But over the last year, as we've talked about previously, we have been uh, collecting a bit, of, uh, a bit of money, a couple of funds, and then we've donated that to um, an institution we like. And we always said we wanted to have someone on to talk about this. And uh, so there we go. Here is Nikolai Rabo. Maybe can you talk to us a little bit about what your role at this uh, institution is and what the institution is? Yeah, thanks, Pascal and Bryson for having me, for having Velavrika on your show. Um, as you said, you supported us uh, previously, so I'm happy to talk a bit about what we're actually doing and um, why we think... Um, bikes are the best. Um, uh, the organization that I'm working for is called Velovrica. We are a social enterprise based in Bern, Switzerland. And what we do is we collect bikes in Switzerland and refurbish them with a, a network of uh, integration workshops all in Switzerland. And then we export them to Africa. So we have partners in about seven countries in sub-Saharan Africa. And there we set up and invest in social enterprises, bike hubs, we call them. And we also help them to initiate vocational training programs or bring bikes to disadvantaged groups. So that's about it in a nutshell. Okay. I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on in, in that intro statement already. So uh, I'd like to dissect a couple of those things. Uh, maybe also for the listener. Um, when you talk about social enterprise, what do you mean with that? So social enterprise is generally considered as an organization that is not, for example, mainly dependent on donations. So we have a hybrid financing model and we also want to bring kind of the entrepreneurial approach to whatever we are doing, be it in Switzerland or also be it in Africa. So in Africa, we, we, we want to support local entrepreneurs to set up their own business in the bike industry. So to create a sustainable company that is in the long run independent from us, that creates jobs, creates income and kind of um, yeah, can basically define what they want to do uh, based on how they see the local market. So that's what we understand as a as a social enterprise, and of course it has social in the name. So, so um, it's cycling and recycling is in our DNA. So we believe that um, yeah, this is doing good is part of just like what we want to do, right? And in the in the long run, so 
what is the 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 main goal for Well Africa? What is the the future state when you've been really really successful? And I think you're already very successful. What lo- does that look like? I mean the the demand for for mobility and access to kind of reliable modes of transportation such as cycling is huge and uh, not only here in Europe we see all over the place in particularly urban areas how cycling is kind of on the forefront so um we also see that uh, in Africa there is this huge demand for for safer for faster uh, means of transportation and that's where we think and see that bikes can come in and and play an important role so um we want to kind of help uh, setting up the the infrastructure to really promote cycling um in 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 certain countries um, where we are active so it's it's a bringing in the bikes but also developing the know-how around cycling uh, mobility about maintenance and of course what we also see is then the whole culture that that um kind of is being created around cycling so in africa often the, the bike is still kind of a, a poor man's or woman's vehicle so um we 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 can really see that um our partners manage to kind of um create um similar movements and tendencies what we see here that cycling is can be leisure can be fun can be used uh, as a means to commute can bring so much more um to the people than just transport goods from a to b so so we want to support um the people bring them kind of a a reliable and safe um means and modes of transportation and your work here in switzerland is uh, pretty much um a mirror image of what you do locally in africa just that you're doing it here locally with uh, with refugees if i understand correctly and the whole value chain is 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 a bit different from what we do in switzerland and what we do in africa so in Switzerland we we collect the bikes as i mentioned in the intro and then we have um about uh, 34 workshops in Switzerland that refurbish the bike refurbish means they check the bikes um they repair the bikes so when they leave our workshops they are in kind of top top quality and in those workshops the bind, the bikes are are kind of a means to a greater end also so for the per, the people who who work in those um, social integration programs um, um, for them it's kind of working on the bikes can can have an added value so it can can uh, be part of as you mentioned the refugees it can be to kind of get used to the swiss working culture um, um, but it can also be for unemployed people to as part of their coaching and um, programs to to find a, another job or a new job and get back into the first label market so it's kind of part it's the bike here in switzerland is more part of a of a of a bigger goal integration of 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 of, of people whereas in africa it's really part of the the, the social enterprise so bringing bikes to to people um um at the end of the day people like you and me who who just want to like to get a bike in africa and and then they can go to one of our partners and, and find whatever bike they need whatever color they they want whatever size they need whatever type of bike they need so the approach is obviously different here it's more collection and refurbishment and in africa it's social entrepreneurship training and mobility so i, ha- I haven't been to africa but uh, the kind of image in my mind is that uh, the, as you said people are using these bikes for mobility and they're not thought of as just a uh, normal ways to transport, and they're leaning to more towards wanting to have cars. Um, kind of in like the other end of the spectrum, I see uh, places like Denmark, who they really celebrate the bicycle as just a no- means of transportation, and don't think of themselves as cyclists per se. Um, why is there not this kind of culture in Africa where they really do need this uh, access to mobility, and the bicycle would would um, facilitate that you mean the question is more leaning towards kind of the the status symbol of of a bicycle if i understand you correctly is, is it that is it a sim- is it a symbol there i mean uh, i mean i again i can of course only talk um for the countries and partners that i was right i mean just to make that clear it's it's again that the cultural context in africa is again very different from region to region and from from city to city from village to village right but generally, yes, um, the bike has 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 been seen as as I mentioned before, rather as a 
poor men or poor women's mode of transportation, right? You have to use your personal force to, to move ahead, to transport goods. It's not, asso- it's not associated with wealth. Like when you can invest in a, in a motorbike or in a car that can, can show um, that you have reached a certain level of, of, of income um, and, and, and that you want to show kind of um, what you have achieved. So the bike has always been kind of at the bottom end of the, the, the status, um, how do you say, pyramid. And, and, and that could be a reason why it's, it's not, um, it has not reached yet the same level of appreciation that it has here, right? Because it's associated with work, with labor, with, with uh, transportation goods to the market. So um, I assume that that could be some of the reasons that it has not reached that level of, of kind of um, yeah, appreciation that it has, has here in, in Denmark or in the Netherlands or also, also here in Switzerland, right? So that are, there are some reasons. And but I said also before, um, we can see um, where we are active that change is happening. And it, it's just a matter of showing people kind of the different sides um, of a bike, of cycling, of, of different types of bikes, of high-end ga- bikes. But also, and this is a really interesting thing, hey, the, the job as a bike mechanic is kind of a valuable job. It's an appreciated job, in, particularly, for example, in Burkina Faso. Everyone rides a bike. And even the first president, Sankara, in the 60s, came to office with a bike. So it's kind of the first time that a president came to work with a bike. So that was important for people, right? You wouldn't, wouldn't expect that today. Even there are few presidents who do that. Um, so everyone is riding a bike, but still the, the, the job, a bike mechanic, is really at the, the bottom end of kind of the, the status in society. Because why? It doesn't pay a lot. And everyone basically can do that if they fail school, if they don't find another job, because you can kind of learn more or less um, like becoming a bike mechanic, right? So it's at, it's at the bottom end. And of course, if that, there's not much status um, to it. You don't pay nothing for a service because it's just what everyone can and does, right? So so, so what we see now is really when we invest in kind of in the, in the, in the infrastructure, in the tools, in the types of bikes, in the high-end bikes that also... That, that the people donate here and, and we can show, hey, there are different types of bikes. We can really see that the level and depreciation for this job and the respect is increasing. And that's actually what our ultimate goal is to show, hey, bike mechanics is kind of, is it, it's a great job, right? And you, you should be proud of it. You can make a living if you have good bikes, proper know-how. This is this is a service that, that has a, as a decent value and with that, you can kind of set up your own future for your family. And that's actually where we want to head, right? To, to show everyone, hey, cycling is not just like a simple thing. It's, it's way more and it's way more diverse. And, and you, can, you can make um, a living out of it, right? Definitely. I truly believe a bicycle is a humble machine that will change the world. And I think, yeah, through societal changes and technological change, techno, technological changes such as the uh, newer cargo bikes coming into the market, and just yeah, e-bikes in general, there's going to be a, a massive shift in this uh, micro mobility, as you call it, and it's going to yeah bleed into all parts of the world, including parts of Africa. And they're going to see that there is real value, and especially if you have now a tremendous more amount of bikes, um, the the the, the use of a bicycle, a bicycle mechanic or like the need for a bicycle, bicycle mechanic is going to go way up. And therefore, the value of that service is going to go higher mm-hmm. as well. And it's not going to be seen as this lowest, uh, lowest level of, of, uh, of job. And actually, I mean, I very, I very much praise my mechanic, mechanics that I visit because they do a top quality job. And myself, I want to have the best. Like when I do work on my bicycle myself, I do the best I can. And a professional mechanic is going to do much better, but I also praise him because he's even doing, you know, the best he can. So it's, it's, it's a great profession, I would say. Um, you talked about Burkina Faso, um, and you talked about where that you're active in Africa, but we haven't talked about where exactly you're active at the minute. So maybe do you want to spend a couple of minutes on uh, where you guys are active at the minute? So we have partners, two partners in Tanzania. Uh, in Arusha area and in the rural Tanzania Kagera area that's on the west side of um, Lake Victoria for those listeners who who have been to Tanzania 
Um, we are in Madagascar. We are in Burkina Faso, Ghana, Gambia, Ivory Coast, and South Africa. So these are the countries where we have currently established partnerships. Um, the different level of partnerships, I must say. So some are just small, um, small kind of merchants. Also a bit fr fr from the 90s when all started. Whereas, um, as I mentioned, in Burkina Faso today or in Tanzania or in Madagascar, we have Bikes Hub um, that, that today really have a, a high turnover of bikes. So I'm talking about 5,000 plus bikes um, that they kind of manage to distribute already every year. Um, they have uh, jobs created. They have th this um, vocational training program that I mentioned, or they also currently implement various social projects so so these are the countries where, where we are currently active yeah and maybe looking back i mean you've been uh, with Vil africa for quite a few years now so what has been for you personally what has been the most rewarding experience so far yeah rewarding to be honest it's it's when we for me the most um kind of cool thing is and i'm i'm an entrepreneur myself so so i really live uh, entrepreneurship and i i start to to do and um, stuff let's say from scratch um so when we start setting up a hub right so we basically start from from nothing there's maybe a forest some bushes and we start cutting the trees with the the local team and 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 we see kind of slowly how 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 the hub evolves right so we bring in the first container of bikes a lot of hustle we don't know yet the, exactly how it works with the customs delays like everything but like because we're talking about physical goods i just love to see how like the, the project the infrastructure evolves right so 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 you see the tangible kind of output of the work that you put in and then of course the people that kind of are part of the project and really are passionate about what we are doing. I mean, I must admit that maybe not a lot of people also that we recruit locally, they, they at the beginning can imagine what is possible with bikes, right? So we, we usually recruit people who maybe have a business background or, or we knew, know from somewhere that they have been active or might they are like entrepreneurs, but it's not that we usually start with like bike entrepreneurs because that's not what you find. Like, what we are looking for so to see how those people really like start to realize okay wow this is bikes and this is something that has not been here yet and now we kind of start to develop a business around it the business plan and people are coming customers are coming right more bikes are coming suddenly like um, companies ngos approach them for to get like 100 bikes for their farmer so to see kind of Yes, there is a demand and the, and the need for those bikes and for the work that they do. I think those two parts, like the physical aspect and also kind of the joy of the people to really become cycling enthusiasts, this is this is great to see. Oh yeah, we can uh, we can see that. That is a uh, and also how you bring it across is really 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 cool and uh, yeah, I guess very rewarding work. Um, <clears throat> Without uh, blowing my own uh, horn uh, here, uh, the, I've done some, some fundraising for you guys before, and I think it would be uh, an interesting um, anecdote to hear from you, because those, those funds, they have been dedicated to this bike hub in Burkina Faso specifically, and it would mm -hmm. be cool to hear from you how, how that has gone since then. So that fundraising was in 2017 in the context of the BC bike race at the time. Um, so yeah, it would be cool to hear the, the story of the project since then. Yeah, it was actually possible thanks to contribution like yours. Um, usually at the beginning, we, we are looking for, for funds from, from foundations, from, from private people who, who, who would like to support a project like that. So, um, as I said, um, we were active in Burkina Faso quite some, some time. We had some partners and some loose distribution networks, but but we realized um, from our experience in Tanzania that to, in order to structure kind of the whole uh, importation, distribution, and to make it also more professional, um, it is possible or it makes sense to set up like a, a decent structure, a, a company basically that only deals with bikes, right? So, so back then in 2017, we, 
we 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 had this idea to also set up a bike hub in Ouagadougou. That's the that's the capital of of Burkina Faso. And yeah, we gathered some of the people we knew um, that already took bikes from us. Um, and and we yeah we we started uh, over a period of maybe one year the, the discussion. Hey, how such a hub could look like? What it needs? Where where should we put it? Who who should be involved? And yeah, uh, the the output was again we we found the location and we started to kind of um, set up a, a bike workshop that today um, yeah has a storage facility for for almost 500 bikes. Um, we have a workshop where we today um, either repair bikes, um, but also maybe I can talk about that a bit later. Um, we offer training to other mechanics. Um, so we're doing a bigger initiative now to kind of train up to 700 youth in the next uh, three years in Burkina Faso to become bike mechanics. And we have a small showroom. We have about five to seven people now um, working there. Um, um, sales, management, uh, marketing, mechanics. So, so, so it was really possible to kind of yeah set up a decent structure. It's called Faso Velo, so Burkina Faso and and bicycle. And yeah, it's starting the work gets st- starts to get around in in Ouagadougou that there you can get uh, high quality bikes from Switzerland. You get good good service, good maintenance, spares, big issue. You can get good spares. So, um, yeah, it has become kind of already a, a bit of a kind of a, a meeting point of, of also cyclists. Um, we have one uh, girl, she is now doing an internship and she's part of the national racing team in Burkina Faso. So um, she, wa- she was just so skilled. So they wanted to keep her immediately as, as one of the, the main mechanics. So she's now part of this program. So, yeah um from from again um just an idea today we have we have a bike bike center that already manages to to import 10 10 containers 10 to 12 containers um per year and then of course distribute them in the city but also important um um to bring it further out in the rural areas where where bikes are are very much needed this really does sound like a a, a, a hub uh, like a, a place where a community a community can develop, rather than just uh, like a typical bike shop where you'll find mechanics and and some some bikes for sale. You've got uh, really people who want to to come in and drop in and form a community there. Um, now, do you have uh, like an affiliation with the the owners or the, the the people who run this this hub, or are they uh, having a um, independent um, kind of business of their own? Fazovelo as such um, is a legal structure. It's a, how do you say, GmbH, a company limited by guarantee. So um, Velofrica has uh, uh, owns 20% of this company. This is um, important, um, an important thing that we realized uh, in order also to just be part of the development. Um, we only have 20%, but of course we can kind of see it and, and help kind of out in in with regard to the direction that that the company should go so um yeah and then we have um other owners who who own part of the company but importantly i mean it's it's a limited guarantee and of course um that's important for us that should we make benefits one day uh, which it does not yet um the idea is really to in- reinvest then the 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 surplus into the company or in 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 any other um social project so that's a bit how we try to kind of help steering the direction bring in our vision but again it's not i think it's important to say that we don't think that we know and have to control everything i mean these are entrepreneurs and and we should give them the liberty also to 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 develop their vision and to give them a bit the incentive also to create something that is their own and if it's successful uh, it maybe they also benefit from it again we're talking about bikes this is not like a million dollar business and um, but it should be kind of hopefully one day yeah um, pay decent salaries to 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 the people who are involved and maybe also um, the entrepreneurs who are involved and um, if they are lucky maybe they should also benefit from it right but with that we think we can create the right incentives that everyone is super motivated to push this project and uh, 
yeah see see where it takes us and then the, these hubs such as um uh Faso Velo uh you guys offer a, a vocational training and do you so you have applicants like a waiting list or is it uh and and do you train them to the same standard as uh, like someone would receive in say Switzerland and how do you how do you facilitate that yeah, you know, a good question. It's again a bit different in 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 every country where we where we have a vocational training. Um, in in Burkina Faso, it's 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 really a new approach. Um, previously, we we tried to kind of focus on the needs of the company, so maybe we train three to five to ten trainees, um, in a two to three year training program, which is um which is based on the, the curriculum also here in Switzerland, but of course adapted to the local to the local needs. Also often the skills of the mechanics um, is different, of course, when you graduate here and do a vocational training, you can read, you can write, you can do mathematics. You cannot expect that um, from people who go into bike mechanics. So of course the foundation is different and you have to adopt um, the, the teaching style and the teaching content. So having said that, in Burkina Faso, we 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 move beyond the company lens. Let's let's put it like that. Because as I mentioned before, we we kind of want to uplift the whole bicycle industry in Burkina Faso. Now this sounds a bit now like like a big vision, but but we we see the potential um that that we can with the with the right um inputs we can actually uh, lift a lot of people um that are already in that sector and and we see also a lot of um um of the government officials um appreciate this broader approach um, that we are doing now. And when I say broader approach, it means that actually we have identified six regions in Burkina Faso. And it's kind of, we move from top down. So in Ouagadougou, we have the main um, training center where we train like the most talented and skilled mechanics. Um, we have identified them and they went, to a, went and through a screening. They have a high level of, of reading and, 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 and writing skills and, and also technical um, skills already. Maybe have, they have done an apprenticeship in another um, um, area like um, car mechanics. So them, they have been trained and they are, are, are being trained now. And then they themselves move into the different region where we have like decentralized training institutes. So there again... Around those institutes are small workshops, and those m workshops again have maybe a patron, a head of the workshop, or um, and they themselves again have maybe one or two apprentices or already young kids who work there. Right, as I said, maybe if you cannot um, continue to school, you 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 might end up as a bike mechanic because that's maybe your father did it, someone in the family, you have nowhere else to go, so you become a bike. So we have like this network of of people who are involved low skilled and now we kind of um, uh, are kind of um, moving top down to to kind of um, improve the know-how of, of of the people who are then training the people around their kind of um, area of of activities um, and that's kind of how we try to dissolve the know-how um, within the industry right so of course it needs different levels of of, of, of training and skills again um, different methods different um, pedag pedagogical skills um, but that's kind of how we try to do it at the moment um, it's obviously different from how it looks like here um, but still i mean the content at the end of the day um, is, is very similar what you have to know um, as a bike mechanic right and so say for example um, you go into this program you you graduate doing well uh, you get sent to one of these um, decentralized areas and you're helping and you really su help this place succeed and you know other uh, um, young people also kind of follow in your footsteps uh, you're seen as maybe this person who has more potential is there somewhere else or something else that can happen for those people can they uh, kind of make the way up some other ladder or you know is there another maybe path for them in burkina faso we don't know yet what opportunities this training will give them um in madagascar or in tanzania where we're already doing it a bit longer um we can see that um because we kind of have a formalized training this gives a certain level of kind of accreditation 
um, that you have done uh, a training, that you have acquired a certain set of skills. In Madagascar, for example, the training program is even now kind of accredited by the government. So, of course, with that kind of um, um, paper, you can apply in, in a company and get a job. And we see that that it works. Youth, youth they find a job um, not in the bike industry, somewhere else. Um, but also, of course, um, some youth, they, they graduate and, and they, they become uh, managers of small bike hubs, bike ateliers um, that are closely linked to the bigger hubs that we have already now. So, so of course, that's also like an idea to really like create a network of people who know the bikes, who have the tools, who have been trained. And, and, and by that, we kind of can guarantee also in, in more rural areas, the proper maintenance of the bikes that, that someone might buy one Monday, right? So you don't have to come back to the capital to get your bike fixed because the local mechanic maybe does not have the tools or the know-how to fix it. So what they usually do, they just take off the parts uh, when they cannot repair it. So the bike at the end is just a frame. It works. Uh, you can ride with it. But of course, you kind of miss out a bit on the technical specifics of, of, of a bike. But that's how it works. And by bringing the mechanics kind of to the people, um, yeah, we can kind of help to to keep the bike in, in a good shape, right? So... I, 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 I see uh, your question and it's, it should be definitely also the goal that, that maybe not everyone wants to stay in bike um, mechanics and, and they hopefully find a job wherever they are needed that they can show that they have acquired a certain set of skills. What do you currently use the most resources for? I mean, obviously there's a, a lot of capital that you use, I assume, but uh, you know, in terms of time, how, what, where do you spend the most time and the most money where... Where do you spend the most of your energy on? I mean, the people here in Switzerland that um, kind of are responsible for collecting the bikes, um, um, maintaining the the, the, the the partnerships with the, the workshops in Switzerland, um, communication. So, so those people, they do a, a, a great effort in, in making sure that we actually have um, enough bikes um, available for our partners in Africa, right? Because without the bikes here in Switzerland, um, there is no story to tell. Let's put it like that. Um, the partners, to some extent, are, are dependent on the bikes from from here. So um, a lot of uh, time and, and passion is also invested here to find the bikes, to bring them as efficient as possible um, to our partners, to refurbish them, and then to to load them into containers. So. As you might imagine, uh, logistics in Switzerland is not um, so cheap. Um, so, of course, whenever we have to, when bikes come from all over Switzerland, right? Basically, from wherever you live to to one of our workshops, it has to be transported. So um, that that is um, that takes quite some resources to to do that and orchestrate that. Um, so, so I would say the, the whole work, of course, here in Switzerland um, is, 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 is resource consuming. And if you think about it, I mean, we do like, usually it's the, the, the other way around, right? <laughs> How the, the supply chains work. So we bring a, a product from a very um, a high quality country um, abroad. And of course, um, it's kind of to some extent surreal to do that. It's that's why it's such a crazy and beautiful idea. We produce in the most one of the most expensive countries in the world, right? And and bring it maybe to areas where the purchasing power of the households is is, is not so high and and fragile. So this crazy idea, of course, uses resources uh, and donations uh, here in Switzerland that we can kind of maintain this whole supply chain that it needs. We're dependent on like a lot of um, associations, individuals who, who volunteer their time, who, who donate money, um, and that we can actually manage to bring those those bikes at an affordable price um, to Africa. And, uh, you know, you've mentioned supply chains, and supply chains is in everyone's uh, mind at the minute, certainly in the bike industry, and uh, of course in a lot of other industries as well. Um, how, uh, how has COVID interfered with... Uh, with all of your operations yeah i mean uh, there's the the aspect here in switzerland right uh when it all started and of course there was a bit of a time 
leap um, when kind of COVID started to also unfold in, in Africa. So we were always like observing, okay, well, actually or trying to understand what's going on here in Switzerland. How will it affect the collection, uh, uh, the, the production side in Switzerland? And then the, the international logistics that actually got completely kind of, uh, how to say, completely disturbed at some point as you as you might know and then what's going on in africa how will how will covid affect the the people there how, how will governments react um so it was for us it was it was quite a challenging time to just plan actually we couldn't plan to be honest we were just like playing around with um kind of scenarios how it could play out um so Maybe I start in Africa again. Um, I mean, what you could see is, of course, that a bike um, in times of COVID actually had a huge impact, right? I mean, often people ride in minibuses, in buses, uh, where then, of course, infection rates are higher. So the bike was actually a, a mean of transport that was was ideal um, for for this type of for this type of, of time. Um, but of course, also, I mean, um, there were these unsanitary measures. There were lockdowns between cities. People couldn't or less uh, go out and 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 it was not sure how it, how it would evolve. Um, but generally, except for South Africa, where the situation is still very bad, as you, as you know, um, um, actually businesses in general um, continued um of course with the necessary measures to some extent but they they didn't our partners didn't experience the same level of of closures um that we experienced here in switzerland so in switzerland um we also closed our workshop for one month uh, in in spring because it was just i guess like everybody we didn't know like how to handle it and what would be best so we closed the workshop, so of course we had a disruption of, of of the supply chain of the provision of bikes that actually our partner needed, right, um, to to uphold their business, um, and and also um, a bit more maintenance services were needed in Switzerland because everyone suddenly was riding a bike, and our partners not only not all of them only produce bikes, so they also often often have maybe a, a workshop, and then yeah, I mean the the waiting times for getting a repair was crazy right uh, during covid so um, the shift maybe focused uh, focused a bit at some point to reparations uh, in switzerland and actually producing for for export so we had a bit of a a, a breakdown but not substantially um, i mean luckily all, i mean we had at some point our, our storage was empty and uh, I guess also people at some point realized that they could maybe sell their bike instead of donating it because just everyone was looking for a bike suddenly and and even maybe a not so good bike you could still sell. So we had a bit of problems getting enough raw materials at some point. But um, yeah, it was it, it was a bit of it, it went back a bit uh, the, the the bike numbers, but uh, by now it kind of recovered. And uh, um, we are back on on track, um, getting enough bikes. Of course, um, still we are looking for more for more bikes in general. But it's not that we had like a super um, um, reduction of, of of bikes. But still, it was a, a tough time to to coordinate um, those different worlds and uh, keep 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 up with uh, what is needed and where bikes are needed and. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. So ambivalent um, feeling uh, towards COVID, of course. I mean, with all the yeah difficult situations that were created, of course, also personal uh, families that were affected in Africa and in Switzerland. So yeah, finding the raw materials, for example, the bicycles, is the is this the the first step in all of this, and. How is it that you found was the most effective or best way um, to to reach these people who want to donate their bike? In general, yeah, and kind of in general, like what's the kind of the camp? Did you have like a campaign plan, or is there basically a word of mouth system that works really well? What's how does that how is that working? 
Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think s- still we have uh, quite a bit of a potential in Switzerland that, I mean, a lot of bikes are sold every year. I think it's about 450,000, um, according to some, some statistics. And I assume there are a lot more in in sellers. And we we only collect about thirty to forty thousand a year, so so there is still a huge potential, I think, to 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 collect those bikes. So I assume one reason is that people maybe don't know yet about Velovrica uh, enough. So um, what we do is, of course, yeah, we have different channels how, how we try to 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 bring out the word. I mean, uh, from social media to our own magazine, and then also, of course. Um, some some partnerships with um, maybe other magazines um, in order to promote the story, just to inform people that that they can do that. I mean, there are also various initiatives on the level of of certain municipalities or cities where they kind of inform their their people, their citizens that this is an option um, to donate, to donate a bike um, um, to Well Africa. So um, yeah. I think I would say we have still rather the classical um, communication um, tools that we are using. So if anyone is out there uh, and has a great idea how to to, to spread the word, um, how we can reach more people, feel free to approach uh, uh, you guys and then you let me know. Um, but yeah, that's about how we do it um, at the moment. For example, you have... a. Uh some passionate people who even reach out to you to uh, organize their own collection for you to then come in and take those bikes in a, in a, a larger quantity, a lot, let's say. Um, what's the, what's the feedback from, from these, these individuals who donate their, their time and their energy to, to do this? I mean, it's a great cause. I guess that's the, the overall um, kind of argument that we hear that it's just that, that the people want to be part of this this story and you can become part of it because there are so many opportunities how you can uh, become engaged right be it as you mentioned the collection event you can do it in your in your neighborhood in a city or in your vicinity or, or wherever you want to w- want to do it with your association with your maybe sports association with your um, I don't know with your company you 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 can collect bikes you can organize a, a bike race like you guys did and, and and collect some money and and become part of the story and and yeah I mean for me it's really important to show really that and, and I think that's the beauty about the idea that it is not just that you donate maybe your time or, or your money but you have your bike that that you probably or a lot of people have kind of on a connection to, right? Um, you use it over some some people come and say, "Hey, this I used it for 25 years and now it's a time and I wanna wanna donate it to you guys because we know it's 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 there's a, like a greater purpose that you guys are are following and and we can show and 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 we can prove that hey, this bike goes to someone who really like needs. Uh, this bike and then choice then a, a better kind of mode of, of of transportation so i think it's just it's 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 the story that is simple enough to understand i mean you don't need to explain anyone why a bike is, is has such a big impact everyone knows most of the people know unfortunately not all of them know um um, but a lot of people know, and and this is kind of, a, I think, a good basis to 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 find people who who, who want to be become engaged, right? Definitely. Do you have anything more, Bryson? Uh, no, but I was going to ask Nikolai anything special that you wanted to say that we never touched on. Did we? Did we? Did we meet everything? Yeah, um, I guess we. I hope we we managed to kind of show a bit like what it takes to to bring a bike from from Switzerland to Africa and 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 also that Velofrica tries to kind of not just kind of bring old goods to to Africa but we really thought about how can we kind of reach the potential of of the bike kind of that it can unfold the potential in in, in many ways um, to kind of help people to really build a future around the bike, also in Africa. 
I hope I managed to kind of showcase that. Definitely. Helps. And and as I said, yeah, I mean, there are various ways how you can become engaged yourself. If if you have a bike um, that you don't use anymore, if you have maybe contacts to to the bike industry that you think, hey, why are the big players not yet in Africa? I mean, we don't know of any big players that that are that sell bikes or bike parts in Africa and we are kind of preparing the ground for them to to kind of enter this market mm -hmm. so um we are sure it's just a matter of time and and we hope that we can help um some of the local entrepreneurs and um, to kind of once the, the moment is there that they can really benefit from that and we can really kind of help create this bike movement also in different areas in Africa so if you have contacts um, um, that you that you want to let us know about if you have, know some companies maybe that that are interested in 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 helping uh, psych mobility to 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 gain more traction or, or want to support some social projects in Africa let us know and there are many options how you can support and and yeah become part of the story like you guys did and yeah supported us already like in different ways. Mm. Well, one part of the story we haven't heard, and I think that would be a great one to close out, is uh, we haven't talked about how you stand to the bicycle. How does the bike figure in your life? I mean, it's a ni nice question to to end, I think, this podcast. I mean, I, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm not a, a hardcore bike rider, uh, like probably many people out there. Um, but for me, it's just uh, like still it's like an everyday thing, right? So either I commute to work, to bike, I I, I talk about um, how we can kind of improve the environment for cycling in Switzerland, in Africa, like basically every day. And of course, it's just be it in Switzerland where I just like use the bike to to kind of and on the bike, the best ideas kind of happen, right? So if you go out for for a ride here in, next to the, the mountain here at Liberic Zurich, take my gravel bike out and just go a bit and have fun. This is the moments where I can can kind of get my energy and, and think about actually new ideas, how, how we can improve uh, what we are doing. But also, um, I mean, to ride in a, in a street in Obidjan, with your bike where nobody cares about bike riders this is just a crazy and awesome thing right and it it's it's when you talk about uh, cycling is is freedom that's what it is but it's also crazy um but you feel like <laughs> you're doing something like new that nobody does or few people have done before i mean we're talking about riding a bike right in in the traffic but it's kind of you want to show everyone that hey why are you sitting in your stupid car in a traffic jam for I don't know how long while we guys are just having fun on the road and enjoying ourselves. Uh, this is the best feeling that, that, that I, that I have when I'm in Africa and just enjoying myself and um, going around with partners in this crazy traffic with the bike. <laughs> That's awesome. And as you said, it's a great, a great note to end on. Nikolai, thank you very much for your time. This was really interesting. Um, if our listeners want to find out more about you and about Vel Africa, where can they find you? You can find us on velafrica.ch or of course also on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook. Drop us an email um, and yeah, we hope to get in touch with you. Nice. We'll put those up in the, in the show notes and uh, you guys can find it there. Nikolai, thank you again. Super awesome. Hey, thanks guys for having me. It was great talking to you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. We really hope you enjoyed this episode. As we mentioned at the top of the show, you can find all the links and the relevant info to this episode in the show notes. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, why don't you share it with your riding buddies? It really helps us grow our show and reach more cool people like you. That's great advice, Pascal. I really enjoyed making the episode as well. And I'm really looking forward to all the cool stuff we're going to be doing in 2022. So stay tuned, guys. 